As professionals with different areas of expertise, engineers and architects can have very different understandings of what makes a great building design. This can lead to disagreements that can slow the project down, increase cost of the project, and just cause general frustration between the two parties, making it difficult to move forward and come to solutions on later issues. So in this video, let's go over four common conflicts between architects and engineers and some tips on how to resolve them. Number one, design changes. Ever so often, architects can come up with designs that aren't practical or feasible to implement. For example, an architect may suggest a large glass facade in a region with high wind speeds or extreme weather events, which could pose structural challenges to the structural engineer. In order to accommodate for the loading criteria, the engineer may have to implement changes to that original glass facade, something that the architect may not like because it's impacting their original vision. As the structural engineer, I know that we want to keep that open mindset of anything is possible. You know, if we can think it, we can engineer it and we can create it. While that is true and you want to have that passion, we always need to realize as a design team that it may not be appropriate for that specific project because of uh, the associated fee or the complexity to the project or the, to the timeline or to the schedule, where just because it's possible doesn't mean it's practical. To resolve this example conflict, both parties need to be working together and communicating openly with one another early in a project. The key word there is early. Where problems can arise is if you don't communicate with the architect early. If you neglect the project, if you don't really get involved early on in that schematic design phase, you may be pigeonholed into a situation where you can't engineer something efficiently, and then you have to make these changes to the overall design that the design team doesn't like. So as the engineer, you wanna make sure to engage early on when that building is kind of being formed and the final shape hasn't been settled yet. Throw in your expertise as the structural engineer um, and give your pointers and be realistic with the designer, AKA the architect or the architectural designer, what it would take to make their dream a reality at that point in time. Once they are aware of it, there will be so much less uh, headbutting in the design phase because both parties will be aware of what it takes to get that job done. From this, you will work together and find a compromise that meets both the aesthetic needs of the architect as well as the functional needs of the engineer. Number two, timeline pressure. Sometimes architects can have unrealistic timeline expectations for completing a project. Not all of them, but some, just like engineers. They may not consider the time required to complete the engineering after the design phase. This again is something that can lead to conflicts between the two parties. To avoid this conflict, it's very similar to my recommendations for topic number one. The engineer needs to work together with the architect early on and create that schedule with the architect together. While the engineer is responsible for the engineering and the architect is responsible for the architecture, both should be considering each other's timelines together and blending them to create a more effective, efficient schedule. The best architects are ones that know a little bit about structural engineering, and the best structural engineers are the ones that know a little bit about architecture. That way, as the design develops, both can recognize areas uh, that are challenging that the engineer may need to put in additional time for, or that the architect may need to put additional time in for. And it's not the architect that needs to discover those. The engineer can discover them and vice versa. That way delays can be caught early, can be incorporated into the schedule, and they can continue and hit their milestones together. Number three, communication gap. Engineers and architects oftentimes have different ways of communicating and oftentimes may not understand each other's jargon. Something with me personally that I've come into conflict with before is misunderstanding titles of deadlines. 100% SD set, 60% CD sets, 90%, 100% permit set, construction set, bid set, um, while a lot of these terms are, are very similar or the same between the engineer and architects, there has been misunderstandings before with what 90% actually is and what's going to be included with that deliverable. I didn't really think twice about what I was supposed to be delivering because I had done it before, but ultimately when push came to shove and it was time to deliver, I was missing some documents or there was a misunderstanding of how much effort I was supposed to put in to that point. Take the extra step to define those deliverables. What's included in them? When you say, oh, um, you know, bid set, um, design documents, go a step further if you don't fully grasp what that means. Are they signed by the engineer of record? Is this a temporary set? What is this set being used for? Is it going to be used for estimating purposes? All of these additional questions asked amongst both the engineer and the architect are great to paint a more detailed picture of what is expected in the design. 
You may be saying, wait, but architects and engineers are in the same design field. How many different expressions or sayings can they have different between one another? Well, believe it or not, there's quite a few. And the key difference here is that it's not the most far off things, like the most engineering thing you can say versus the most architecturally thing you can say. Those things aren't as big of a deal. It's when you get closer to one another of, is this a curtain wall or is this storefront? Is this glazing? It's getting into that gray zone of what I may call it as the engineer versus what the architect calls it. And they can be two extremely different things. They have to be designed different. They have to be detailed differently. Um, so it's in those areas where this concern can arise. Number four, cost versus aesthetics. This one, in my opinion, comes up the most between architects and engineers. Some may say architects prioritize aesthetic over cost, while engineers prioritize functionality over aesthetic. When the underlying goals between the engineer and the architect are different at their cores, you will have a butting of heads effect throughout the entire design process, simply because both parties have different priorities. And ultimately that makes sense because the architects are responsible for one thing in the overall design of the project, whereas the structural engineer is responsible for many other things. To resolve this conflict, it's important for both parties to keep each other accountable for the decisions that they're making. The architect should always ask questions when they believe that the engineering solution that is presented may be costly and vice versa. The structural engineer should speak up when they believe that the design that the architect is uh, proposing may be extremely expensive. It's important for the architect as well as the engineer to realize what type of project they're working with, what the owner is asking for and expecting, and what the budget is for that project and not to exceed it. It sounds simple, but oftentimes we can get carried away with wanting to create this overall vision that we have for a project. And we start to push outside the bounds of expectations that the client is expecting. We all wanna have really cool buildings, I get it but there's a time and place for it, and it's the responsibility of the architect and with help from the engineer to make sure that we're hitting the right criteria for the client's needs and expectations. Let me know down below in the comments if there's any additional conflicts that I've missed. And if you wanna hang out a little bit longer and learn more about the design industry and all the great things about it, check out one of these other videos. Maybe over here? Where did I put them? Over here. They're on screen. But until next time, this is Rich with Team Kesteva, and I'll see you all later. Peace.